regret. That is a word you typically will not hear me use, and the reason being is I don't call them regrets, I call them lessons. You know, maybe we're not happy about the way it happened or the outcome, but guess what? It taught you something for the future, and you probably won't do the same thing again, right? And as car enthusiasts, we all tend to sometimes have those lessons or regrets. And the reason that happens, I think, is because, well, maybe we could build our car one way and we don't. Or maybe down the road we decide that we did a mod that we're not crazy about now and we, you know, we wish we would have never done it. Maybe you've owned a car and you modified a car and now you're like, why did I ever buy that car? Why did I ever mod that car? But anyways, where I'm going with this is I want to make a little video talking about some of the things that I wish I would have done differently. Before we get into my car though, do me a huge favor and hit up the comments section with two things. I'm really curious. Number one, I'm starting to run out of ideas on stuff to do to the car. So if you have anything done to your WRX or STI or any car for that matter uh, that I don't have done to this and it, maybe it's a really good investment or something you really enjoy, let me know because I'm at the point now where it's either everything I want for the car is way too expensive and then the stuff that I like find for the car that I think might be cool is kind of cheap and tacky. So if you have any good recommendations, let me know in the comments. And number two, if there's anything on your car that you wish you could change or that you're thinking about changing, let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to hear it. So going backwards, one of the very first things that I did to my car was the window tint. And I really wish I could change that now. I wish I could go back and redo it. And the reason being, I mean, I learned a lesson from it again, is I went to that guy, you know, oh, I can do it cheaper. Well, I got a cheaper job. And I'll be honest with you, the tint itself looks pretty good. I don't have any bubbles or anything. You know, the tint itself is perfectly fine. However, the guy didn't take as much care doing my install as he could have. And he definitely gave me a few um, few memories here to remember him by. And that is in the form of a couple of little dings in my quarter panels. And then some pretty sizable dings in this quarter panel. Right there and right there. And then I have one on the door that was also caused by the tint. And I know it was him because he was wearing a belt with a squeegee on it. And all of these marks, all these dents, had little squeegee scratches where like, you know, if you take like a piece of rubber and rub it along your paint, it'll leave that mark. Well, everywhere the dents were had those markings, and that's how I knew it was the guy tinted my windows. Also, when I got the car tinted, it only had roughly 2,000 miles on it, so I know for a fact it didn't have all those dings because I precariously washed my car and took a lot of care of it when I first got it. Not that I still don't try to, but nowhere near as much as I used to. I washed it like every single Friday, and I would have seen all those dents. This one's really bad. It bugs me really bad. So if I could go back, one of the biggest things I would have changed was some of my performance modifications. And I wouldn't have necessarily changed the modifications that I did, but I would have waited to do them all and get tuned until I had some of the other stuff that I wanted. So I wanted a front mount for the longest time, and instead of getting the front mount, I cheaped out and got the top mount, and then later on down the road decided to switch with the front mount. I really wish I would have just got it right off the bat because it is so much more efficient. Not that the top mount wasn't efficient, it was really good, but when you get really hot days, it really sucks. It's nice to have the front mount. So I could have actually potentially got a little bit more horsepower out of it if I would have gotten it tuned when I had the front mount. However, no big deal. It is what it is. Another thing I would have changed was, I don't know, I, the Mishimoto intake is like so-so. I wish I would have got something different, maybe a Grim Speed intake. Um, I'm not super crazy about the Mishimoto intake. It sounds good, it works good, but it doesn't have a stop for the filter, so anytime you change or clean the filter, you have to be very careful that you put it back in the exact same position that it came off of, or you'll throw off the tune. I wish I would have just bit the bullet and got the notes from high pressure fuel pump. Uh, the tuners say you can run the stock high pressure fuel pump, you just have to like cycle out your gas and stuff so that you don't run into the issues. Well, I found that yeah, you still get the oscillations, and it does. the oscillations do go away when you fill up with 93, but uh, I really wish I would have just got the, high, uh, the nose from high pressure fuel pump because then I wouldn't even have to worry about it. So I've had fuel oscillations with my stock pump, and it's a pain in the butt. And yeah, so one of the other things that I wish I could change is get a quality set of coilovers right off the bat. So I did the lowering springs, and they were okay for a while, but they completely blew out my stock struts. Made it to where like I can't even sell them or do anything with them. And now I have the uh, Silvers coilovers. I love the Silvers. They ride fantastic. They're comfortable, but yet nice and solid. I have them pretty stiff and the car has no body roll whatsoever. I love them. However, I wish I would have got them sooner. I wish I would have done them long before I did the springs. And the springs were actually one of the very first upgrades I did because I had them from my old car. 
Uh, if I could go back and do something else over, when I did my OEM headlights and I tore them apart and painted them, did the sea lights and everything, I wish I would have did like the hex halos and demon eyes and all that crazy stuff. I probably would have kept them around. Um, but instead, you know, I ended up getting these and I, I am happy with them. I don't regret getting these at all. They are really aggressive and really cool and they're really bright. Another big thing that you guys are probably waiting to hear is the S209 flares. I just made that video about them. So that was a hard lesson learned of why you got to be careful about what you do to your car and you got to just double check and overthink everything. That flare kit screwed up my car so bad and I'm not going to blame the flare kit. I'll blame myself. I'll put all the blame on myself for it. Um, but I installed it, uninstalled it, installed it, uninstalled it five or six times. And in doing that, all the stress on like pushing the pushing the flares onto the car and ripping them off and everything else has caused damage to my car. So I wish I would have never done them to begin with. But you know what? Lesson learned. The only bad thing is now I'm going to have to pay somebody to help, you know, do all the PDR work on my car because... I mean, I can do body work and stuff, but since I moved to Florida, I sold all my equipment and I'm no longer going to be able to do it. Plus, I'm not painting half my car. All of this is PDR stuff. They're not being careful taking my wheels on and off. So when I take my wheels on and off, I've actually been pretty not so careful and I've caught my brake caliper and taken a couple little nicks out of it. I mean, the brakes are brakes. They're going to get dirty. They're going to get chips on them. They're going to get messed up. But I'm really sad that you know, I've been a little clumsy when taking my wheels on and off and like letting the wheel kind of drop down and hit the caliper. And so this one's not so bad, but I've gotten a few paint chips in the caliper from doing that. Uh, I know the red Brembo's fade over time and everything everywhere anyway, so it's not really, I don't know, it's really not that big of a deal, but just something small. I feel like I've done really well with the interior. I have no regrets on anything I've done. I got the performance package, so I had the Recaro seats, and then I did all the carbon fiber inlay pieces so these are all real carbon fiber and then I matched my if you guys haven't seen it I paint matched my seats and I painted a pinstripe so this is almost the exact same color as what's on my seats I painted that pinstripe along there then I painted my shift knob to match my seat so it's like the exact same color as my seats the CVT transmission trim with the carbon all that I, like everything that I've done in the interior of the car zero regrets I love it all Moving on. Lesson learned. It is a regret, but it's a lesson learned. I screwed my lip up. So I've had a couple different lips on this car and every single lip has been perfectly fine. I've never hit a curb. I've never done anything to damage it. And then I get this nice new carbon fiber freaking noble lip and I catch a curb pretty bad and put a little hole in my bumper. I touched up, I touched up all these scratches. You can hardly tell that they're there if you're not looking for them. But this hole is pretty, I have no idea how that even happens. And it sucks because that's what I used to do for a living is fix shit like that. And so that that's something really easy that I could fix. But I sold all my equipment. So I don't have my paint guns. I don't have my sanding tools. I don't have anything that I could use to fix that. So that's a bummer. But it is what it is. I'm going to take the lip off, swap it out for something else. This next thing is really recent. I cut up my front bumper. So you guys probably see that the front bumper is cut and you probably see exactly where right here where the front license plate delete would go and everything. I saw a couple people, you know, put holes in it or trim it up a little bit to fit the front mount or to get more airflow to the front mount. Sorry, but um, I've actually noticed that this is helping. Believe it or not, with this massive intercooler in here, this piece right here blocks off a lot of airflow. You're talking, you know, what is that? A good three, three and a half inches. And then it comes up. And this rides the entire way. There's a lip that comes around, folds inside, and goes the whole way across. And I know no air is hitting it because when I trimmed it off, this whole section right here was really dirty and like sort of like grayish. And then this whole entire section up top here, you can see I've actually taken a recent rock chip to the intercooler. But this whole top piece here was like nice, deep, gloss, shiny black. And then all this was like dirty and gross. And believe it or not, my intake manifold temps have actually gone down quite significantly, even on hot days. But as you can see, now the bumper doesn't look so hot and you got these gaps. And I might try and find a way to fix that down the road, but I might have to replace my bumper anyway. And then I'll change, I'll decide whether or not I want to do that on the new bumper. I probably won't, but it's good to know that it helped. Another little lesson learned right here. The, I didn't like how low the exhaust sat, so I got upgraded hangers and got it to sit as close to the bumper as possible and you can see the exhaust gets hot and it melts the bumper. 
Anyways, guys, that's a couple things that I can think of off the top of my head. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again soon. Hopefully, we'll be doing some new stuff, some cool stuff, some installs, something worthwhile. But again, thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.